Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. We are back in the private pilot series but we are not doing any maneuvers today. We are actually going to stay on the ground and learn about reading VFR charts. I will try to keep this video short and concise. I will only give out a little bit of information so that you guys can easily digest that information and I am pretty sure that you will learn more from these short videos that are coming in more than just sitting down and watching a 2 hour video of reading VFR charts. Before I get into the topic, please help me out with a couple of clicks here. Please leave a like on the video and please subscribe to the channel it really helps the channel and it helps with my motivation a lot in making these videos anyway with that out of the way let's get into the topic and we are going to review this small airport and know everything about it and around it let's talk about airspace first right so this small little airport is located in which airspace we have a magenta circle around this airport which means that in this area the class golf airspace extends from ground up until 700 feet and anything above 700 feet is class echo now what does that mean for any area that is outside this magenta circle so any area that's outside the magenta circle has class golf airspace up until until 1200 feet AGL and anything above 1200 feet AGL is class echo. Hope that makes sense. So inside the magenta circle, class echo starts at 700 feet AGL. Outside the magenta circle here, the class echo airspace starts at 1200 feet AGL. Now let's talk about the airport itself. So from the airspace standpoint, it makes sense. So when we'll be taking off, we will be within the class golf airspace up until 700 feet. And if we cross 700 feet in the circle then we would now be in echo hope that makes sense i've explained it quite a few times but i think this is something that confused me quite a bit now let's talk about the airport itself so we have a magenta circle right with with these kings around it so that means anything that is magenta will not have control tower or it is not a controlled airport for example we have the warmstead field here which is a private field again that's magenta and that means there is no control tower here so that's one of the things that you need to remember that anything that's magenta is uncontrolled airport now if you have a solid magenta circle that means that airport has a hard surface runway at least one hard surface runway between 1500 feet to 8069 feet in length so that's one thing to remember as well so for example this airport and this airport both of them have one runway which is at least 1500 feet to 8069 feet one more thing that you see is you have these kinks or whatever you call it on the airport marking which means that there is refueling service available at the airport so when you're doing a cross country and if you want to know which airport may or may not have fueling you might want to check out these kinks for example this warmstead field private field that doesn't have the kinks so that means there is no refueling service available here next thing you'll see is that you also have a star on top of this airport marking uh, that just means that uh, there is a rotating beacon active from sunrise to sunset at this airport now that we at least know what's available at the airport in terms of runway rotating beacon fueling services and we also know what airspace the airport is located in let's talk about things around it right and when and then we'll go over the main information here which is the frequencies and all of that right elevation frequencies all of that you'll see that you have some uh, triangles here which show some numbers one outside the bracket and one in the bracket so all this means is all of these obstacles the triangles are all below 1000 feet AGL the height of those is below 1000 feet AGL so there's for example there's one obstacle here which extends up to 14 19 feet above mean sea level but it only extends 350 feet above the ground so the above altitude is above mean sea level the the one that's outside the bracket and then the one in the bracket is agl or above ground level so you can say that this is 350 feet tall from the ground same way 314 feet tall but above mean sea level the height of this uh, of this obstacle would be 1344 feet and that'll make more sense i'll come back to that when we talk about the airport information here okay now let's get to the actual airport information so airport information will always start with the county and then whatever the airport name is and then in the bracket you will have your uh, airport identifier so that's SYM so that is KSYM same way for this one you'll see there's the airport name and then there's the ID identifier the next thing you'll have is AWOS-3 AWOS is basically automatic weather observing system and then dash 3 is just showing you which type of AWOS it is there's different types of AWOS there's dash 1, dash 2, dash 3, dash 4, dash A I don't remember all of this and I'm pretty sure most of the people don't so you can always keep a glossary in your iPad or whatever you're using to review the 
the charts to make sure that you when you're looking at the weather you know what kind of AWOS it is. The AWOS for this airport is being transmitted to 119.95 frequency. If you tune into 119.95 on your comm that's where you're going to get your weather information for this airfield. So that's uh, up to the third line and then you have the airport elevation information. So the airport is 1028 feet above mean sea level. So this is not above ground level. <laughs> ground level is zero, but this is 1028 feet above mean sea level. So if you set your altimeter to the local setting, to the local altimeter setting, this is what your altimeter should read. Okay. Then the next is star and then L. Some airports you would have only L. Looks like most of them are star L. Anyway. So star L means that there is airport lighting available, but um, you'll have to look at the airport facility directory to make sure that you know what the limitations of those lightings are. If it says L, then that means there's lights on the airport without any limitations. And the next number you have is 55 here, which means that the longest runway at this airport is 5,500 feet. So anywhere there's a number, like for example, 50, that means the longest runway at this airport is 5,000 feet. Same way, if you review any airport, every airport will have have a number. Lawrence County Air Park also has a number 30 which means the longest runway on there is 3000 feet. So that's what that means and then uh, you also have 122.7 and then a C in a solid magenta circle. That just means that if you're around this airport, basically 1 to 2.7 is your advisory frequency or your or your uh, common traffic advisory frequency. So you would you would transmit your position and intentions and all of that on that common traffic advisory frequency of 1 to 2.7. So that's how you read a VFR chart and at least know your airport up to some extent. Now I'm sure I have not covered everything in this so that it's easy to remember stuff that we are covering in this video. Now I'm also treating this series kind of like revision, I would say, for me as well. Well. So if I'm making mistakes anywhere and you guys are real pilots and you have experience, please make sure you correct me and I will make sure to pin that comment down below and let's let's all learn together. Let's all grow together and let's build a simming community that's not just into Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 as a game, but also as something that we can learn from and kind of train in. So thank you all for watching and I'll definitely be back in another short video with some knowledge share or some maneuver. See you all on the next one.